By the time the 19th century ended, a huge stream of immigration increased the ranks of Catholics in Boston. The Irish famine and immigration in the mid-century brought thousands of new Catholics into the Boston area. During the early to mid-1900s, Bishop William Henry O'Connell insisted on confidently asserting Catholic identity. After O'Connell's time as Bishop of Boston, Richard Cushing was appointed as a new Cardinal. Cushing raised a lot of money for the church and made himself known in the community. Cardinal Cushing was outgoing and irreverent. He liked to raise money to help others and to make the community aware of the church. He made himself relatable to everyone in Boston while still following his duties. As well as being more laid back than the other bishops, Cushing was also Irish, the favorite heritage of Boston Catholics. Cushing made himself heard when he thought he needed to make a point. Cushing had shown an early sympathy with blacks. During his time as Cardinal there were two major events involving the Civil Rights Movement that influenced where he stood in the matter. In 1964, the NAACP entered the South Boston St. Patrick's Day Parade and four teenagers leaped into the streets and started throwing things like tomatoes, eggs, cherry bombs, bottles, and beer cans at the float and holding up banners and promoted segregation. Two priests from St. Bridget's Church in Lexington, Father Tom McLeod and Father John Fitzpatrick, were arrested trying to integrate a restaurant in Williamston, North Carolina. They were the first American priests to ever be arrested for civil rights activity. In 1970, Cushing began to grow sick and the church began to search for a new cardinal. Their choice was Cardinal Humberto Medeiros. Medeiros, as a young child, was very much associated with the church and would attend Mass daily with his family. He knew he wanted to be a priest when he grew up and was influenced greatly from growing up surrounded by religion. He was named the Bishop of Brownville, Texas in June 1966. Brownsville was a nation of small and diocese and contained less than 300,000 Catholics, mostly made up of poor Mexican-American workers. During his time as bishop, there became a conflict between farm workers and the owners. Medeiros heavily favored the side of pickers, showing his respect for hard workers. After Medeiros was sworn in on October 6, a cross was burned on the Chancery Lawn. This hateful outbreak represented many community members' feelings towards Medeiros. Coming into Boston was not easy for Medeiros, and he knew coming in that he would not be respected, especially after Cardinal Cushing. Being Portuguese was a disadvantage in Boston during this time because of the very large Irish Catholic community. For years, the Cardinal of Boston had been Irish, but now a new ethnicity was entering and the community did not know how or if this would affect the church. Catholicism in Boston was mainly run by Irish, and being a non-Irish cardinal did not sit well with the majority of the Catholics in Boston. It was up to Medeiros to break this tension and integrate himself into the scene and become accepted by the other people of the church. Medeiros' personality was contrasted to the personality of the former Cardinal Cushing. He was uncomfortable around his followers and was very religious and old-fashioned. In theory, the church had the power to set an outline for standard Catholic morals and tell the people what is asked of them through God. The church itself is only a messenger of God. However, cardinals like Medeiros can tell the people what Jesus would do, or the church's input to the Catholics in local events and use the church as an organized force of loyal followers to emphasize the church's view publicly in hope of supporting and protesting against an idea or a change in society. In the 1970s, the church's ability to use their influence on the people to support integration was greatly limited in Boston. Evidence of the decline of the church could be seen in the dramatic decline in attendance at Mass between 1960 and the late 1970s, from 75% to 55%. Another reason for the loss of power was from homosexual Catholics when Madeiras claimed that homosexuality is a wicked and immoral corrupt act. Finally, the huge death of 42 million the Catholic Church had created was another example of how the church not only lost many followers but financial support as well. In order to manage with the debt, the church had to cut their budget by 40% and close a number of their facilities. Medeiros, in his position, had the opportunity to voice his opinion of the busing crisis, but he could not make his ideas into realities. People already had demands on Medeiros, and by not wanting to upset anybody, he failed. By not saying anything about the busing crisis, the black community's hopes were faded. Medeiros simply did not say enough. Medeiros originally said he would not let the private Catholic schools become an escape from the busing crisis. He did not want people to come into the Catholic school systems because they did not want to integrate the public schools or deal with the busing crisis. Medeiros soon goes back on his word and allows for anyone to be admitted to the private schools. Medeiros gave in easily 
but knew that by letting more people come into the private schools would be more recognition for the church. Even when Cardinal Cushing was at the head of the church, Catholic Church, the church was already declining. But one thing the Cardinal could provide that the Medeiros could not was giving the people hope. Medeiros did not understand that a church is made up of a collective group of people who have opinions, ideas, and things that should be pursued and listened to. Medeiros' dull personality and attitude destroyed any chance of interaction with the people. Medeiros strived to help the people as he showed in Brownsville, yet once he thinks he has done enough, he pulls away, not fully committing himself to a point of view. Medeiros furthered the decline of the Catholic Church in Boston. He essentially began with promising a better future to the people, but pulled away and remained silent during his time as a cardinal. In a lot of ways, Medeiros made a bad name for the Catholic Church because of his lack of effort to maintain the church's reputation and status amongst the community.